Hello everybody, I'm Ed from CanucksHockeyBlog.com and this is CHB TV. Uh, this week we'll be discussing our new show as well as possible destinations for Le Ber Ber uh, Roberto Luongo or Corey Schneider and uh, the slow start to the season and what it means when we only have 48 games. It feels funny to point at nothing. You're, you're, the angle is actually right. <laughs> All right, we're good. It will be something. It will be something. Yeah. <laughs>Welcome to our new show. My name is Clayton Nemo. I'm at Canuck Clay on Twitter. Along with writing for Canucks Hockey Blog, I like to do these Clay's Canucks compositions, some music videos. And when I'm not doing that, I'm working full-time in ministry. Most importantly, I have a wife named Gail and three kids, Sean, Jacob, and Kayla. Hi, my name's Alan, and I'm the owner of Hog Shack in beautiful Steveston. You can find us on, uh, on Twitter at hogshack. Sorry, hogshackca. Uh, we're massive... Huge Canuck fans over here, and hopefully you can come see us sometime and visit us on uh, on a game day. Massive. Hi, I'm Ed at uh, Ed Lau on Twitter, and uh, you can find me on on Canucks Hockey Blog on several other blogs. My own, for example, uh, Ed Eats, uh, where I take pictures of my food and <laughs> tell people if it's good or not. Uh, when I'm not doing that, I tinker with airplanes to make sure they're not crashing, and uh, I do stuff like this. If you're looking around. And uh, you see all these cameras everywhere. Chris? Uh, thanks, Right Said Ed. Uh, my name's Chris Golden. I'm at Lightforce on Twitter. You can find me in Canucks Hockey Blog, uh, where I'm currently the uh, head for our, our social as well as uh, partnerships. I also write a personal blog from time to time where I rant and rave about whitecaps at leftcoastbydesign.ca. Uh, normally, you can find me online talking about a variety of different irreverent topics, Top Gun, Community. I'm also a big fan of Back to the Future, which is why I'm still trying to find 1.21 gigawatts of power, because I do want to go back in time to deflect in Nathan Lafayette's slap shot. Well, you guys, it's pretty cool. Just sitting around, buddies, talking Vancouver Canucks. And I love talking about the Canucks because, you know, one of my favorite childhood memories was me, my brother, my dad. This is before they televised every single Canucks game on TV, just listening to the smooth voices of Jim Robson and Tom Larshide on CKNW. Well, it, it's funny you mention that because like, I, I remember going to the old uh, Pacific Coliseum watching the Canucks play. I mean, my first game was, was watching them beat the Caps on like 6-3 and how I, I look up on top in the press box and you'd see, yeah, yeah Jim Robson up there. You'd see uh, Tom, uh, Tommy and was thinking, oh, that must be pretty cool. And listening to them on the radio, like, almost like, this, I don't know, there's something pretty special about it. You say they made you fall asleep? Well, not that the Cox made me oh, fall asleep, but you know, I was, I'm a kid here, I'm a young kid, and you know, it was I was that kid who actually had his radio tuned to the AM station. Awesome. Because, you know, bedtime, Cox played at 7, 7.30, so, but I just, there was something soothing about that, and yet, you know, here I am today, and I, heaven forbid, I even close my eyes during the game. <laughs> Well, 93 was a big year, obviously, for uh, you know that big trade with uh, St. Louis. Uh, brought a lot of good players over in Meso and, mm -hmm. and the whole deal there. That, that's when I got started on the Canucks, and, and ever since, Apple Burry, keep going. You know, all those, all the best players, Sadin, Aslan, Bertuzzi, mm -hmm. under every every game, and uh, and uh, we celebrated here at the, the Hog Shack here. So. Alan, the name dropper, I love it already. Bertuzzi, <laughs> Meso, yeah, yeah Meso, big, big, Mesa. yeah, big what turning that, point. What's that? What? Uh, Ronnie, Lameso, Courtnall, Quinn, and no, Quinn, Quinn went the other way, right? Was, yeah, Quinn went the other way. It was uh, Courtnall, Ronnie, yeah, and Lameso. Oh, there's four players, I thought. Was that when Brown came on board? No, Brown was in later trade later on. Oh, okay, I just I know we're not supposed to mention Mr. Brown, but <laughs> it's okay. Well, let's move on. Speaking of trades, how about this Roberto Luongo stuff, you guys? Obviously, it's gonna hang over the, the team as, as the, the Canucks go. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Is he gonna go anywhere, and where is he gonna go? Let's well, there's a lot of speculation right now, uh, you know, with today's news with Mike Willis uh, kind of putting out some information to, uh, to say that something might be in the works for a deal. Um, I'm okay with keeping Luongo all season long if that's what it takes to, to kind of get, uh, you know, have two number one goalies fight at it and to get, you know, get us into a position to protect some points that we need for this 48-game season. Yeah, like, I, I totally agree with you, Alan. Like, you think about where the Canucks are, like, why would they be in a pressure to make a bad deal? Um, 
I, I, I really see how you know the mechanics of the market are playing right now. You have the Toronto media who uh, are talking about Luongo being a backup goaltender who isn't worth more than just a draft pick. And so while you have some markets that are looking to talk down the value, I mean, it's business. So I, I expect Gillis would come out and try to talk up the value. I mean, is there truly a mystery team or another player? Maybe, maybe not. And, you know, um, you know, here on CHB, will be talking about uh, you know Luongo in the mystery machine. And uh, I mean, who knows what it's about? But mm-hmm. I understand those that say, you know, why why not make the deal because there's another need. I mean, look at the Canucks. We have a first line, a third line, and a fourth line, and a bunch of guys playing on the second line. And maybe we do need to, to fill that void, but at the same time, why, why race into a deal if it's a bad deal? But that's yeah, what I mean. I'll, yeah. But I'll give you two reasons why we should make a deal. Dale Weiss and Zach Cassian as two of our most prominent forwards. Doesn't that scare you a little bit? Like, I know Kessler's hurt. I know Booth's hurt. I know we don't want to rush into a deal. But the longer we keep Luongo on the bench, or at yeah. least backing Schneider up, the less time we have with getting new players into our lineup. Just yeah, I, it out You there. know what? I, I agree for the time right now where we're in a situation where something has to happen very quickly here because we don't have a lot of time you know eight games ten games in if we're not over 500 we're out of a playoff position right off the bat yeah but it's i mean all things relative like people are asking me well what's up with the slow start I'm like well it's, it's preseason there wasn't one i mean the connects historically have a slow start so it's about percentages if the connects start slow in a regular season for a month well let's look at that as maybe being weak we exactly. can have and yeah, yeah sure that's, those are points you can't afford to give up I mean there's other teams that are struggling we've seen this throughout the league I mean look at Detroit are they going to be cashing in you know as many goals uh, against as they have them? no um, you know but Howard's I, being pulled uh, Lundqvist's being pulled um, you know every go- starting goaltender has at some point in time had some trouble in the first few you know few days yeah so, yeah I, I think in what well, we got to look at in, the, in this kind of shorter season right now is we're playing teams in our division when you lose two points, you're given two points as well. So okay. it's a double whammy there. Okay, well, um, before we get to that slow start, I want to ask Ed, what about you? Do you think, is there a problem with them trading Luongo within the division or the conference, per se, versus back east somewhere? It would really depend on the return we get. I mean, if we're considering a, um, a trade within our division, we're going to have to face Luongo not only this year four times, but we're going to have to face him six times next year, six times for the next 12 years, right? So it would have to be something ridiculous for, for Edmonton to get Luongo from us. It would have to be something absolutely stupid, like Paul Everly and Newman. That would be <laughs> stupid. Oh yeah, that would yeah. be absolutely <laughs> ridiculous. Uh, I, I don't know who Jeff, uh, Steve Cavallini. Don't don't do that. He won't do that. Well, <laughs> but, but Ed, you, you bring up a really good point. I mean, we we sort of you know preface this is like we're we're looking at Luongo being the. The goaltender that's traded and, and us here at you know chb uh, on our facebook page and on our site we've asked this question like if the canucks get a serious offer mm-hmm. for corey schneider let's say tambalini calls up and says hey we want schneider you know we've had a rough go and we're going to give you the nudes we're going to give you hall we're going to give you everlay and uh Dubnik, and we want schneider Do the canucks they say oh sorry he's untouchable not going to happen like i I, I look at the two goaltenders, and this is not saying I want Schneider to be traded. I'm not saying even Luongo needs to be traded. Like, I think we can keep him. But let's say that happens. You know, look at Schneider. He's a younger goaltender. He's got a favorable contract term. He's got favorable contract dollars. Mm-hmm. He's proven last season he could handle the load. Now, can you do it consistently? Maybe that's up, up in the air. But what's not to say teams aren't knocking on the door saying, hey, you know what? We like Luongo, but we like Schneider more. Does Longo stay? Do you trade Schneider? I'm okay. pretty sure that you have to consider every yeah. trade. I mean, you can't just say Schneider's our guy. Now. You can't just go. That's it. We're we're not we're not gonna deviate from the plan. You know, we, we if you get a ridiculous offer, you've got to consider it, no matter who it yeah, is. I agree. Like, I would if you got like Crosby for the Sedins, wouldn't you do it? Oh. Uh, uh, Crosby and Malcolm, Malcolm? for the Sedins. Okay. Crosby <laughs> and Malcolm for the Sedins. Would you Done. Do it? Straight up. Yeah, Done. I would do it in a second. But if, to say to not consider something like that yeah. is going to be ridiculous. I just think the way we anointed Schneider, and we did anoint him at the end of the playoffs last year, I think it means that that offer for Schneider has to be that much farther, better, over and above what they would offer Luongo for even us to consider it. I just think it's hard to go back now. Oh, no, I, yeah, it definitely is hard yeah. to go back. But, like, what's not to say that that's not the case? Yeah. Like, we, we truly don't know yeah. if there are other teams out there that are looking for, for Schneider. And are sure. they willing to offer one? I mean, there was the, 
Uh, rumor where anything that Philadelphia has offered to get Luongo requires, you know, Bruce Gallup to come back, and that's a humongous <laughs> big problem. Yeah. It'd be pretty funny. <laughs> good, <laughs> good interviews. <laughs> yeah. But you Why know, you have to be three. Yeah. <laughs> what what comes down to it? Like, if let's say they say, okay, tell you what, if you give us Schneider, you don't need to take Bruce Gallup, and we're right. gonna. You know, send whomever back. I mean, I, yeah, that's a, that would be tremendous upside in a deal like that. So yeah, yeah, why not? Okay, one last thought about this Luongo thing. So we've heard anywhere from Toronto, Florida, Philly in the East, right? Then maybe Chicago, maybe Edmonton. Those are five of the teams we've heard. Do you think there's anyone else there that would be remotely interested that the Canucks would in, uh, would listen to an offer from? Why? Well, I, I don't think there's a team in the league that wouldn't be interested at mm-hmm. the right price. But then. Conversely, does that mean the Canucks are interested in the price they're willing to pay? Is, you know, I think, I look at it this way, it's too early. Like, is Detroit interested? I mean, Howard hasn't had a, 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 you know, good game yet. Mm -hmm. Why doesn't, you know, maybe they put uh, Luongo in the net, but then Luongo's proven he needs defense. I mean, there was, you know, one season where he was able to stand on his first season with the Canucks where defense was optional ever since then. It's been a defensively sound team. Yeah. And Luongo has sort of shown that he does struggle with the, you know, odd man rushes from time to time. Uh, I, I'm I'm thinking that the market's too small. I mean, okay. Yeah, maybe yeah, those I, are five teams. Yeah. Fair enough. Thank you. Alan, you? I think so. I think so. Uh, uh, you know, the teams that you've mentioned already, I think yeah. uh, if there's going to be any movement on Luongo, it'll be those same teams. There's just not enough. Uh, the other teams may not be in the same position as the teams that you mentioned. What about you, Ed? Um, I don't know. I mean, it, it's hard to say at this point yeah. because there's there's just so much uncertainty with a with a shortened season. I mean, if you ask me at the beginning of this year, without a lockout, I would say there's a lot of teams that, that could get them. But with a shortened season, I almost think we should just keep him. Okay. Yeah. Wow, a lot of uncertainty for sure. Yes. And, uh, yeah. and don't forget Luongo, adding to this uncertainty, he has his no trade clause that he has to waive. For certain teams, obviously. Yeah, I think I think for the time being, right now, is, is play hockey, play yeah. with a hot hand, and, and, and you know, if uh, they're talking about moving, uh, uh, you know, rotating the two players, uh, I think whoever wins the games, you know, you need to get points this season. It's 48 games, right? All right. Well, speaking of hockey and speaking of shortened season, it's been a bit of a rough start. I know it's yeah. only been a few games, but is this the kind of hockey we can expect from our Canucks this year? Well, uh, and what kind of hockey is that? Well. <laughs> Look, I mean, we said this earlier, the Canucks traditionally have had a slow start. I mean, the, the team that we see on the ice the last few seasons, they've never started strong. They've had maybe an epic preseason, and as soon as the puck drops in the regular season, they take some time to gel. Um, obviously, in a 48-game season, it's a lot more yeah, very uh, cr- Every game's very critical. It yeah, is. Every game's very critical, and especially mm-hmm. seeing how the defense have played out the first two games here. You've got Garrison. Uh, you've got Edler, who's just signed a new contract, obviously. Uh, uh, we have high expectations, but they haven't quite come to form in the first two games. So uh, the first thing is definitely defense has to come together in order for us to see any hope. Um, and, you know, our second line scoring, and, you know, they brought in Schrader, see how he can uh, do some damage if or if not. And, you know, what? that's the question mark right now. You know, we've got two core players that are injured right now, and that could be a couple of, couple of important games out. Well, absolutely. And I mean, sure, there's two core players. Like Kessler's missed. I mean, Booth, for all intents and purposes, is a second line player, although it's disputed as to whether or not he can produce. He will be a second line player. <laughs> well, <laughs> he has to be. <laughs> so but I think if you were to look at how the Canucks could manage the lines, I think you, we, have a, we have a third line, a definitive yeah. shutdown line. Yes. Yeah. Why not have that as your, your, your second pair? Your second line is that shutdown group. I mean, they're going to be going out against the top lines and then control the minutes. It works at home. I understand it works on the road when you're sending out, uh, you know, the road line of whatever Weiss, Cassian, Burroughs, who, you know, Schrader, uh, Raymond, whoever. You just but, put five guys in one line. Well, that's pretty much what he does, right? <laughs> AV has has all their names in a blender. He just presses blend and then pulls throughout. Okay, hey guys, you're up. It looks like, it looks like Cassian's going to be skating with the Twins this next yeah. next game for sure. So, anyways, we got a bit away from the shortened season, but let's talk about one more thing. The Canucks haven't won at home since the end of the regular season last year, right? They lost those three yeah. games, game one, two, five against the Kings. They, they're winless in the first couple. What do they got to do simply to start winning again? Alan? They got to get their game together. Um, you know, confidence, I think, is a huge thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's definitely something that's out the window right now. Um, you know, I think 
he's he spent a lot of time. I, I know I'm listening to the you know the t- team 1040 and uh, their practices and and you know their defensive core has to get together. They got to realize that their second their second line is weak. Um, you know, AV is going to shuffle those lines and hopefully shuffle them right this time and, and mm-hmm. put a put a, some chemistry together to, to get that confidence back. So so win at home is definitely something that has to be on the table now or or we're in trouble. Ted. I would, on any other year, I would probably say, you know what, I just trust AD. Yeah. Because I, I, I really hate it when people think they know better than the coach. Sometimes it's obvious, like, oh, come on, don't put don't put Raymond up there with the Sadines, right. you know. But other times, you know what, AD's been there, he's done it before, he's, you know, winning as coach. Yep. I would trust AD to get it, the job done. But we have a shortened season, we have many injuries. Yeah. There's got to be something different that we got to do this year. This is not the same situation as an 82-game season. Yeah. We don't have the yeah, time. Yeah, every, every game counts right now. Yeah, we don't have the time to dig ourselves out of a hole. we be more creative. Gotta, we got to get something going. Okay. So, so, well, but that said, are we satisfied to have, you know, Elling, you know, have his team go back into a defensive shell that we saw in you know, the first few years with him coaching the Canucks? You know, Stanley Cup, no care. You know, it's okay. funny. <laughs> that, that's, that was actually giving me my answer to my own question of what do we need to do. I think if you look at our strength, as our goaltending, and then supposedly the strong defense, at least the, you know, the top four among the best in the league as a unit, I think we really got to build from the from the back out again and really just concentrate on that defensive game. Yeah, it might be a little bit boring, it might be not the most exciting stuff, but if we're winning, I think that cures all ills and I think people exactly. won't mind. So what you're saying is the Northwest is about balance. Minnesota has decided to actually have you know <coughs> players play for them, so the Canucks need to balance it out by being the, the most boring team in the division. <laughs> Yeah, you know what? If if we're boring and we win, look at look at New Jersey. Nobody cares if we're boring. They have a cup. Yeah. You know. All right. Last word, Chris. Word. Last word, Alan. What's up, Ed? Word. And I guess there's not much else to say. Thank you for joining us for our first episode of CHB TV. Hope to see you in a couple of weeks. Take care. We'd like to thank Hog Shack Cookhouse for hosting us tonight. Thanks a lot, Alan. Thanks for having me as a guest. Uh, for you, hockey fans, Canucks fans, uh, come on anytime to Hog Shack Cookhouse. We're located in beautiful Steveston here. Lots of screens, craft beer, barbecue. You know where to go. That's pretty much my I know, it was actually pretty good. Uh, so that's our the end of our first episode. If you guys have any feedback for us, I mean, this is just something we're we're trying out, and uh, we'd love to hear what you guys think. Like, too long, too short. We're too boring. We're too awesome. You know, anything like that. We'd love to hear from you. And if you'd like to join us, I mean, we have Alan as our guest today, but we're yeah. not guaranteeing here to be here every week. So <laughs> that is do, you, we can, do you think you're better than him? Do you think you're better than Alan? You could easily do better than me. Yeah. So if you think you're better than Alan and you'd like to join us, you know what? Um, we film every two weeks. So let us know. Uh, you can find us on Twitter somehow and we'll, we'll get in contact with you. Just ask yourself. Are you as massive a fan? <laughs> Are you as big of a fan as this guy? So, yeah, let us know.